the same-sex marriage debate continues throughout our country, in our courts, in our news, in our magazines, throughout our blogs, and in our Facebook and Twitter feeds, we need to pause and ask a simple question. What is marriage? The whole debate really boils down to a battle between two different answers to this fundamental question. The traditional definition says that marriage is when a man and a woman vow to give their lives to one another. They share in the good times and the bad. They care for each other in sickness. They share in all the everyday things of life, like taking out the garbage or doing the dishes. All of these acts are expressions of love. Yet there's one act above everything else that consummates the marriage, meaning it's the complete, fullest expression of the marital union. The two become one. And their union as one is so real and complete that it can literally bring a third person into their relationship. This new person has the man and woman's marital union permanently stamped into their own body, which consists of half the man's DNA and half of the woman's DNA. Marriage then, by its very nature, is ordered towards family life because marital love is life-giving. New life requires intense nurturing and support, which marriage solves by ensuring both the man and woman will always be there as a father and a mother for any children their union creates. Marriage then calls for a total commitment that's both permanent and monogamous, meaning it's solely between these two people forever. Now, onto the modern definition of marriage, which says that it's not about the total union of man and woman, but instead marriage is a relationship based on emotional intensity. Under this definition, gender doesn't matter, since two people of the same sex can share intense feelings for one another, just like two people of the opposite sex. Here's why this modern definition of marriage is so radical. When you eliminate the man and woman requirement for marriage, you must eliminate all the other requirements as well. In fact, we're already seeing the early stages of these requirements break down in our culture. Let's take a look at some recent examples that show how the institution of marriage completely unravels under this new modern definition. When striking down traditional marriage law in California, the federal judge said that children do not need to be raised by a male parent and a female parent. The gender of a child's parent is not a factor. The marriage laws in California now teach that the role of mother and father have no unique meaning or distinct value to children. Everything is equal, which means kids don't need a mom and a dad. They only need generic parents. Other countries are taking additional steps to remove the mother and father roles from culture. In Spain, the terms mother and father and birth certificates have been replaced with what translates to parent A and parent B. In Canada, an elementary school banned children from celebrating Mother's Day and Father's Day and instead replaced them with the gender-neutral Family Day. In Scotland, the National Health Service deemed the terms mother and father homophobic and replaced them with carers and guardians. If defining marriage based on gender is bigotry, then it makes sense to treat gender-specific terms like mom and dad as hate speech. Newsweek reported that there are over 500,000 polyamorous households in the United States. One of those households recently in the news is a group of three lesbian women living together in Massachusetts. They had a commitment ceremony where each of their fathers walked them down the aisle. They had lawyers equally divide all of their assets. And they've announced that one of them is pregnant from an anonymous sperm donor. These three women are now seeking to legally be married, saying their relationship is perfectly acceptable and a choice of life and love. They go on to say, we deserve the rights afforded to others. If marriage is only about emotion, then these three women have a logical argument. There's no reason why marriage should be restricted to two. That would be discriminating against all polyamorous households. Columnist Dan Savage coined the phrase monogamish to describe the open sexual relationship between he and his husband. They're mostly faithful to each other, but allow for the occasional sexual encounter with others outside of their marriage. Dan reasoned that gay male couples are much more likely to be realistic about what men are. A study conducted by San Francisco State University followed 500 gay couples and confirmed that half had sex with someone other than their partner, and their partner was fully aware of it. Andrew Sullivan, a prominent same-sex marriage supporter, said that the honesty within these relationships can actually be a good thing and help sustain a lifelong commitment. This means that the act of marriage we currently refer to as adultery should instead be redefined as something good and beneficial for marriage. If marriage is only about emotional bonds, then why shouldn't any sexual arrangement be acceptable if it helps enhance the couple's feelings for one another? 
The New York Times ran a story on the wedding of John Pertilla and Carol Ann Riddle. The two first met in a pre-kindergarten classroom where they both had children attending the same school. They also both had spouses. However, after a few years of getting to know one another at various school and family functions, the two said they developed unconditional and all-encompassing feelings for each other. And rather than deny their feelings and live dishonestly, the two abandoned their existing families and married each other. If marriage is solely about emotions which can come and go, then why shouldn't marriages come and go as well? In fact, some are even promoting the idea of marriage becoming like a lease or a contract. Couples only need to seriously commit to each other for a short time period. Then they can decide if they want to renew their contract or find new spouses. So, when you boil it all down and cut through all the rhetoric, the true marriage question we have to debate is which one of these definitions should our culture promote and our laws incentivize? Even same-sex marriage supporters acknowledge that the institution of marriage must change to fit this new modern definition. The gay interest magazine The Advocate wrote, We often protest when homophobes insist that same-sex marriage will change marriage for straight people too, but in some ways, they're right. Victoria Brownworth said, same-sex marriage will make marriage a far better concept than it previously has been. Lesbian journalist Masha Gayson said that, we lied that the institution of marriage is not going to change. It is going to change. I don't think it should exist. Under this new modern definition, I have to agree with Ms. Gayson. If marriage is nothing but an ever-changing contract that can be defined as anything we want it to be, then what's the point of marriage in the first place? Edith Stein once said, do not accept anything as love which lacks truth. We must take her advice and not accept a redefinition of marriage based on emotion that lacks these fundamental truths. Thanks for watching. Please consider sharing this video with others. And if you're interested in learning more about saving marriage, check out the links in the description below.